Glenn has been a casting director in uh, around here for how long, Mike? In Philly? 25. For 25 in Philadelphia. And he's a member of the Casting Society of America. Uh, Mike Lemon Casting has a uh, firm has cast over 12,000 commercials, industrial voiceovers, film projects, and including local casting for the Sixth Sense, Philadelphia, and 12 months. And he also teaches acting for film on both coasts and has written and directed two short films, Hush and Valentine's Day. So with that, um, Mike is going to do a little workshop here today. Um, and it's called Less is More. And uh, we're going to have a little open, we have a nice little ending session. So, you know, feel free to ask questions and everything. And go from there. So, Mr. Little. I was in Baltimore kind of about two months ago for a, a workshop, and one of the actors came up and said, Man, I really loved your dad. Such great work. And I said, Wow, really? You know, my dad was a rose grower. I didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, he said Well, you're, you're Jack London's son, aren't you? And, uh, Jack London spells his name with two N's, and I only spell it with one, but that aside, I, I had to say no. He said, well, everybody down here thinks you're Jack London's son, and I said, well, just go ahead, let me get that. <laughs> but Jack London uh, uh, was a, uh, made his debut on Broadway in Mr. Roberts, uh, which you may remember the movie with Henry Fonda. But uh, they found him on Broadway, he won a Tony Award, they took him to Hollywood to uh, make his first movie called It Should Happen to You with Judy Holiday. And uh, the director was George Kipcourt, who'd already been directing in Hollywood for about 25 years and, and uh, went on to win an Oscar for My Fair Lady. Uh, it was a, it was a lighthearted comedy about a a pretty uh, wacky blonde, which was Judy Holiday's strong suit. And uh, on the first day on the set, Jack Lemmon did his first take, and George Cooper said, oh, that, was, that was wonderful, Jack. Do it, do it again and give me less. Oh, that was fantastic, Jack. Do it again and give me less. Oh, that was amazing, Jack. Do it again and give me less. Magnificent, do it again, give me less. Finally, he said, now, Jack, that was, that, was, that was awesome. Just give me half of what you gave me that time. And Jack said, if I gave you half of what I gave you that time, I'm not going to be doing anything. And George Cooper said, now you <laughs> Michael Caine has a great book and a video called Acting on Film. I don't know if you guys read it. It's a short, concise, really good book, and an accompanying videotape. And he says in there, if you can look at someone and see what they're acting and not doing. So essentially acting in front of the camera, and particularly for the last 50 years, has become more and more naturalistic. That's the idea. So it doesn't seem like performing, it seems like being. You know, that there's a ring of truth and honesty to it. And if you look at the simple science of the fact that, I mean, we're watching this on the screen, but if movies are made to be seen in a big movie theater. So, you know, you take you take natural behavior and amplify it a hundred times. You can see why everything done in front of the camera needs to be done subtly. Because things that are even done subtly resonate really strongly when they're magnified that way. And the people who do the very best job of film acting, you look at them, you can't tell them they're acting. Because they're essentially not doing it except being present in the moment. They are totally present in the moment. Uh, they're, uh, in fact, I, I, I spoke in front of uh, the Screen Actors Guild a couple of weeks ago and, and was talking to the actors about how to prepare for an audition for a film. And I said, well, you know, the truth of the matter is it's less about how good an actor you are and more about what, it, what kind of presence you bring to and when you think about the really, you know, fine actors, you can see that. Morgan Freeman, who to me is one of those actors who's just this wonderful presence who does next to nothing in front of the camera. Uh, I've never seen him give what I would call a bad performance. Uh, 
he's in better films and, and not better mm -hmm. films like everybody else, but he is very consistent in drawing up the money and what he does. First of all, he didn't blink. <laughs> Maybe once. Uh, you know, the, the tiny little blink, the inadvertent blink. Uh, it's pretty. It's a pretty basic rule. The crack in front of the camera that you blink as little as possible, if at all. And uh, I don't know if you if you've been aware of that consciously or mindful of it, but pay attention to it the next time you go to the movies and just watch and see how seldom people, how seldom actors in front of the camera are blinking, because the eyes are the window of the soft makes it feel more connected, more vulnerable, more present. Um, it's all about it's all about the audience's supposed connection with what's what's happening, and the eyes like his eyes there. If you focus on them, you just like fall right into his eyes, and he blinks. And if, he, if an actor blinks too much, it makes it hard to carry through with that connection. Um, the simple. The, the, how quiet he is creates creates an intimacy that the technically films can, can do that because because of the you know uh, high order of sound recording so that actors instead of projecting like we were saying actors do in the theater can speak extraordinarily quiet. My my advice to film actors is to speak only as loudly as you need to speak with, to the person you're speaking to. And let, and let the sound engineers pick up that volume. So in Memento, for instance, uh, which is one of my favorite films in the decade so far, uh, there's that uh, wonderful scene where Carrie Ann Moss is, is coming in around Guy Pierce and listen to it. And, and there are certainly explosions of volume in that film based on it, you know, generated from a, no, a, an emotional response, but it's astounding how intense the scene is. And it actually, I believe, heightens the intensity of the movie's movies. Because what happens with film is diametrically the opposite of what I was taught happened in theater. So instead of being directed or coached into projecting out and projecting energy so that you fill the house or the audience, what actors at their best do in front of the camera is become empty disappear, keep it so simple that the audience is instead drawn into them. Um, probably the leading actors in the history of French cinema was Jean Moreau, Jules and Jim, uh, wonderful actors, and they asked her how she prepared to work in front of the camera, and she said, I empty myself. Um, It's uh, it's cre when she creates that vacuum, when she empties herself, she creates a vacuum. And nature pours vacuum, at, and so in that, from that emptiness, by nature, it's a matter the audience is drawn into that void and becomes enmeshed with the experience of the film. When when you have a peak experience at the movie theater, you disappear too. When we lose our self-consciousness and we become so enmeshed in the story, we disappear. We're not thinking about ourselves. And when we're not thinking about ourselves, then we disappear. Uh, but we don't do that very often. We spend a whole lot of time thinking about ourselves. 